been in this business for 45 years. Started in Oakland, California. Uh, was mentored by a great photographer, you know, the late Kenneth P. Green, who is in the family with uh, the legacy with Gordon Parks. He's one of our great black photographers, historically. And so I come out of a, 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 a great line of people uh, uh, that, that are, have been in this business long before me. And so I'm, I'm glad to be a photographer. I, I make a good, comfortable living doing it, meet a lot of great people. Uh, and so that's what I do, photography. What do you see as the role of the visual arts in our mass-mediated world, and particularly in your profession? Well, from, from the beginning, back in the film era, I come out of film. You, you know, there, there's a different process that we went through versus what it is now in digital. Uh, you had a, a, a deeper feeling and a deeper love as you went through the process of shooting the film, developing the film, printing the film onto paper and presenting the pictures from all of that. Uh, seven to eight steps to get from the shot to the print. Now it's two steps. And so uh, I think these days things are moving too fast, too much, too many bells and whistles. The essence is just like a good old song that, you, you know, uh, my girl versus something that's out now that doesn't seem to have that same feeling that the Temptations might have had singing My Girl. Now, so things have changed. Digital's good. I use it. Uh, but I'm glad I understand the process. The love that I have for photography coming from the old way. Uh, where there's substance in, in, the, in, in photography as, as I know it. With new communications and media technologies, imagery is almost instantly available. Do you believe that this is having a positive or negative influence on the industry and can you provide an example? Right now you can get imaging from a telephone, uh, uh, and from a uh, gas station, little monitor as you pump your gas. It's, it's a bit much. It's a big, sometimes I think too much information is bad because it's confusing. You've got so many different images and so much coming at you that you really can't, can't uh, uh, internalize what is really good and what is not good. In the old days, people took time to get you the right stories. Uh, the interviewers were deeper. Uh, and, and so and, and there's more substance as I go back to that word. So the new way, it's just a lot of, it's just, everything is in God's speed, and it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, some of it's good, a lot of it's not. So I'm just kind of in between on that one there. What popular images do you see that are frequently frequently rechanneled throughout the entertainment industry? When you say entertainment industry, uh, historically, some of the great images that, that I recall is when John F. Kennedy, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated and little John John was doing a funeral possession. He was standing there like it was kind of a salute. I think the guy got a Nobel Peace Prize for that picture. That's if I said that right. But that was a great moment. The picture of uh, Martin Luther King uh, and his uh, I Have a Dream speech is a great image that sticks in my mind. Uh, and, and, a, and a horrible image that, that sticks in my mind is during the Vietnam War where there was a, uh, a guy being shot in the head and that picture just when I saw it, it just, I was young, and it just stuck in my mind. So there's some pictures 
graphic in a negative way uh, and then positive in, in another way. But images, they're, they're deep. I mean, and so these people who shot these pictures were at the right place at the right time. And I wouldn't say that the guy, because he shot the picture of the guy you know, in the head, that that was the right place at the right time. But certainly that picture affected enough people to where that war became a problem and people stood up against the Vietnam War and it finally was over. So images sometimes can be used for change. That's what I'm about. Are there particular images that this industry has popularized and or created? The paparazzi is, is insanely uh, out of place as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I mean, you just, I don't want to shoot images to make people look fat or bad or dead or crazy. Uh, God bless Whitney Houston, for an example. I mean, who... I didn't want to see those pictures of her before her, right before her death when she was in a club, going through whatever it was she was going through. That's, I don't want to remember Whitney for that. She was a great gift from God. Her voice was one of the greatest voices in my lifetime. And so I, don't want, to, I want to remember when she was pretty, singing pretty, and not, not the garbage that some photographers seem to, to think that, that it's, it's, a, it's a living, it's a hustle. So, so I, there's some great images out there. Uh, Barack Obama, president, there's some good images of him uh, in his early stages of his uh, uh, election, uh, being a nomin uh, elected for president. And so there's some good images. It's, it's so many, but there's a lot of bad imaging. And I, I would never, never, never shoot an image to hurt anyone. You know, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Who is one of your favorite favorite visual artists and or what is your favorite style of visual art? I would say Gordon Parks. You know, I mean, he was the he's the father in a way of speaking, the New Day black photographer. Very conscious, uh, he, he did some great movies. There's a movie called The Learning Tree. Not only was he a photographer, but he was also a director in some of his movies. Uh, and, and the Learning Tree went on to be a great show. He, he uh, directed, I think, uh, Superfly, one of the hip little movies they made back some time ago. And so he took it from still to the video, to the screen, and I, and I will always uh, respect and have a great love for Mr. Gordon Parks. The great picture of Malcolm X that you see all over the world uh, is his shot. He worked for Life Magazine, a great photographer for Life Magazine. So he, he's an outstanding photographer that, that stands above the rest. My mentor, Kenneth P. Green, was a great photographer. He used to work for the Oakland Tribune. Excellent. So I got, I'm from a great line of photographers. And so uh, that Gordon Parks would have to be uh, my choice in, in that. How has your knowledge of famous artworks influenced your creative process? It's just identifying with the different movements and styles of people, of artists. They're different than music. There's some great songs, and they're not trying to copy each other. They are great songs are great songs. Like a great picture is a great picture. Uh, whomever uh, uh, has shot it or painted the picture. So, but I, I study in, in feelings and compositions. Uh, I have my own style. I don't try to copy anybody. Uh, everybody has a different consciousness of how you see light. We can look at the same tree, 10 of us, and we all see the tree differently. I, excellence to me is excellence. If you're 100% in what you do, whether it's art or photography, you're 100%. So I study the best and what, what aesthetically 
moves my spirit. And that's how I, I'm moved by that. I'm inspired to see good work, meaningful work. And so that's, that's a part of my legacy, to have a piece. And I have pieces that are in the Hall of Fame, pieces that are hung in different areas of the, the world that'll be there until, forever, maybe. You, you know, immortality is a great piece that you put in to the minds of people, and it means something to the people who, who can respect you for your art.